Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about us and our services, please visit our website at www.wsk9co.com. Today we're going to talk about parks and, and I think maybe a little bit more specifically is the dog park etiquettes and the do's and don'ts or do we really do a dog park? And um, from a trainer standpoint, um, I don't find any joy going to a dog park at all. Um, and it's not the dogs. It's, um, it's the people that create the environment that I think is so difficult. Um, and it's not that I haven't ever gone, and it's not that our dogs haven't ever gone, because we've been in situations where that's the only place we've been able to let them kind of open up. Um, or um, in Great Falls, Montana, there's really kind of nothing to do, and so sometimes we'll go to the dog park, and I think it's more of an entertainment thing, not because our dogs really enjoy it. Um, but, um, you know, there's, there's social situations, and then there's the dog parks. And for me, what I see at the dog park is um, sending our dogs away to join other dogs, to be a dog, and then, and then here's the dynamics of the dog park. We have the person that c dog cannot be off leash, so we go to the dog park to play ball with our dog. There's that person. And then their dog gets grumpy at other dogs because they're being chased. And so there's that. And then we have the person that comes in and um, grabs a poo bag and then sits down in the corner in the shade and reads a book or gets on social media and has no idea what their dog's doing. And then you have the people that are micromanaging their dog um, and getting mad at everybody else because their dog is being picked on or their dogs, you know, the other dogs are being naughty or, or what they perceive as being naughty. Um, and then you have the people that come and find their friends that they see at the dog park every morning at 8 o'clock and we socialize and who cares what the dogs are doing. And, um, and then... Um, and then you have the people that come in that want to train their dogs at the dog park where they're working on recall or making their dogs sit. And then they're getting mad because other dogs are coming to join in to this fun. Um, and then you have um, the people that pack treats into the dog park and then wonder why everybody's fighting over something that's in your pocket. Um, and so it's a, it's a difficult place for a dog trainer to be in. Um, and it's a difficult place because nobody really knows what they're doing. And really, the dogs are just being dogs. There's really nothing that I've ever seen that I'm like, well, that's weird. Why is a dog doing that? It's really just a pack of dogs um, versus a family of dogs, which we've talked to another trainer back east that um, she had a really good point about packs and families. And, and, I, um, and I think that it's great for her to say that. So... Um, Michelle, what's, uh, what's your perception of dog parks? <laughs> um, well, I personally don't like dog parks anymore either. Uh, I used to love to go to dog parks. It used to be like, we used to do that every Sunday. Like that was so much fun to do. Um, I guess first we should talk about the different types of dog parks though, because yeah. there are, there's the dog parks that are just going to be your enclosed fields. Um, I've never enjoyed those uh -huh. because they've always stressed me out. Yeah. Even before I knew anything really about dogs, they've always stressed me out. Because you do have all those different dynamics, and nobody really knows what's going on. Right. And I became the micromanager, and it was seriously like getting to the point that I was getting <laughs> mad at people. <laughs> so we don't do those. Yeah. Um, and then you have ones um, like uh, Tanner Park and stuff like that, that it's going to be a little bit more like hiking, but you'll still have some of those people that stop and socialize. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the parks that we used to love to go to because we didn't have to stop and socialize. We could still just keep walking. Yeah. Um, and I still haven't done those in years either. Um because I have found it starting to get more and more like that mm -hmm. versus how it was when I originally first started with my dogs. Maybe that's just because I know more now and so I just can't handle it. Um, versus like then there's, you're going to have the people that go take their dogs actually hiking, which is not a park, but right. um, which is what we still do. Yep. Um, I'm, there are dogs out there that I think it helps benefit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think more times than not, we're pushing dogs into it that don't really want to be there. Yeah. And... And it's not even that they necessarily don't want to be there. It's just that we're not putting them in the right environment with the right dogs and the right people. Right, right. 
Um, so how would you, what would you tell somebody that um, they want to socialize their dog and make sure that their dog is social? Um, and, and how would you go about that without using a dog park? Well, first I would ask them, what do they mean by social? Mm -hmm. Do they want their dogs to actually go play with other dogs? Do they want their dogs just to be able to tolerate other dogs? Mm -hmm. Um, and what I mean by that is more of like, what is your life like? So my life really is like, we really do enjoy hiking and you're still going to come across dogs. So my dogs are expected to have a dog smell them and then move on. Yeah. Um, but I'm not the type of person that really cares if my dog goes in place. It's, I, I didn't pick breeds that like to do that, first of all. Right. Um, but, and I don't expect them to do that either. And it's not something I want to do. I don't want to go meet new friends at the dog park. That's just never been who I am. Yeah. So it, I would first get to the bottom of what their life is going to be like. Is this going to be something you're just doing it for now? Mm -hmm. Or is this something that you want to do in the future? Um, and then I would. I would suggest, like, training to real life. Um, if you are hikers, go hiking where there are other dogs. Uh, go to Tanner Park and and just walk through and observe. You don't stop. Like, just walk through and see how things go. Um, I'd probably start at a regular, like, trail first so there's not as many dogs. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, take your dog to um, City Creek and stuff like that. There's still going to be other dogs there to socialize with. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to stop and play if they don't want to. Right. Um, so training to real life is more, I guess... Yeah. So do you, um, do you believe that dogs, that we need to take a dog and socialize them? Okay. What do you mean by that? Because, yeah, right. Because in my head socializing, and it is probably because I pick breeds that are not going to go mm -hmm. out and play. Socializing to me is getting out and doing real life stuff, getting out and, and socializing environmentally more than it is socializing in the we're making friends. Yeah. Because of course, and th of course my dogs have dog friends, yeah. but they're going to be the ones that we go camping with. Right. Stuff like that. Stuff that dogs that kind of are family packish that they get to be in that yeah. same pack often enough yeah. that they know those dogs yep. versus we're going to go and make friends that we don't know. Right. And that's what I mean. The difference is, is dogs are born social. They're, they're family oriented animals. And so to take your dog to a dog park to be social doesn't make sense. It doesn't right. make sense. Your dogs are social. It's how we handle it and the environments that we put them in that make them not social. And we put, we set them up to fail because we think that every dog should like a dog park. I would honestly say that 80% of the dogs that I see at dog parks or doggy daycares don't want to be there. I worked at a doggy daycare and I would say it's more than that. Yeah. <laughs> And it would depend on the day, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, because some of them don't know any different if they go to the dog park every day, that that's what they think it is. And then they, they're they just rambunctious. And we call it that they enjoy it because we don't know what else to do with our dogs. I think that's more of what it is, is what else do you do with your dog kind of a thing. So, um, it's, and it's not that we're bashing on dog parks and it's not we're bashing on doggy daycares because I do have clients that I recommend that their dog needs to go, you know, to a doggy daycare situation. If you're boarding your dog, um, in a traditional or a daycare boarding situation, your dog should be familiar with them. And so it's not so stressful. Um, it, it's just that we think that our dogs need to go to, um, this social place, um, to be social, and that's not that's not correct. I mean, it doesn't even really make sense if you really think about it. So I've had so many people tell me, oh, it's like t sending your kid to preschool. No, it's not. No, it's because not. Because it's not the same dogs every day at, at any park or any. Right. So you're not making friends. You're just being thrown in with all these strangers, different strangers every day, and yeah. expected to play with them. Right. And I know kids adapt and stuff, but you still wouldn't do that to your kid. You wouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to take you to a different preschool every day. Yeah. Right. Yep. You're, it's their core family. It's their group. It's their, you know, you, it's just like what, you know, with our kids, we've kept them like going through the same core of people. Sure. You're going to have people coming in and out, but you've got your core. Right. And that, and that's what puts you in a situation of learning and progressing and developing your social skills. And you learn that there's some of the people that you don't like anymore. And, you know, you're not going to hang around that person because you don't like what their choices are. And it's the same for the dogs is, 
you know, they you go camping with a group of friends that would be considered that environment that they're predictable. Your dogs know what they're going to do. Oh, right. there's a one-off that comes in, and now we got to work through this. But everybody has to work through it. It's not just your dog working through all these strange things. I know. When we were talking about this on the last podcast, I was thinking, oh, man, I would hate any other dog to actually walk up on our dogs. Yeah. Like if any of like other campers walked up with their dog, mm-hmm. because, because by the end of the weekend, our dogs have kind of formed yeah. like a family pack right. and there's a lot of them Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. they all know each other and they're all friends, but. <laughs> right. Yep. Exactly. Um, Melissa, what are some of the things that you've, um, you talked a little bit about something that happened last night or this weekend or something at a dog park and, um, and so just kind of what's your overview and, and how do you take approach to dog parks? Um, so Cooper and I, we don't go to dog parks anymore. And mm-hmm. if we do, it's running through Tanner Park at five o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. and there's no other dogs there. Right. Um, Cooper doesn't enjoy them. She just sticks with us and wants to play with us. And yeah. so we just kind of we're like, there's no point really. Yeah. Um, but two nights ago, I, I live near Tanner Park and mm-hmm. we were driving and eight o'clock at night and there were probably about six dogs in the middle of the road fighting and owners were in there grabbing dogs and these mm-hmm. were big dogs. And yeah it just struck me how much of a stressful environment it was and how chaotic and none of the dogs are able to properly greet each other. And once humans become involved, it just kind of (laughs) makes it a lot more intense with our emotions. Um, I do like to visit dog parks in different cities Mm -hmm. just to see what's going on. Sure. Yeah. And I love the contrast and how different they all are. Yeah. Um, San Francisco dog parks, all the dogs were asleep just like laying in the sun. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is really chill dog park. Uh-huh. Um, Canada is super dog friendly, but none of the dogs really interact with each other. Yeah. They're playing with their owners. They'll see each other, they'll sniff, but then they'll just go back to their owners. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's much more relaxed. Mm-hmm. And we really liked that kind of atmosphere. Sure. So yeah. Cooper could socialize, whatever that means. Right. She sees other dogs. Yep. But we really just want her to so- socialize with us. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a great point because um, New York. Um, when we were in New York, we went to the dog park there because we it's fascinating just to kind of experience. And, and I'm sure when you were in Italy, Michelle, that you know you kind of experienced that culture of dogs. And and um, it, in New York, when we went, I don't I don't remember how long ago it was, um, but they that was their very first dog park ever, and people really didn't know what to do in it because in New York, everybody walks their dogs and they kind of take them everywhere when they're out and about and they're running errands, you're walking. And so the dogs would go with them. And so you either have your dog walkers out there or you, you're taking your dog into the bank and you're, you know, so there was dog hookups everywhere in New York. I mean, there was little places you could hook your dog up so you could go in and, and the dogs were really well behaved. And so at the dog park, it was funny that, you know, people really didn't know. It was more like my dog can be off leash and I can sit here and read a book, but my dog's still going to hang with me kind of a thing. It was not, I think there were two dogs that were playing, but it appeared that the people really knew each other too. Like they just wanted to experience it because I think that's what you're supposed to do. And so it definitely different cultures, different places that you go and the dog experience. Um, when we were in Puerto Rico, it was dog packs and wild dogs and feral dogs and, you know, and, and I don't think we came across a dog park anywhere um, there. And so, you know, the cultures are different everywhere you go, but um, it's it definitely um, you should go to a place that's that your dog that makes sense to you and your dog, not just to go sit around to socialize your dogs. And uh, statistically, they say that the majority of the people that go to their dog go to dog parks don't have social dogs that they're trying to socialize them. And that is not an environment that I want my own dog who is very social um, to be in because then I'm just setting them up to fail and, and it's not a good situation. And I've heard a lot of times people say, oh, I take them to the dog park because I don't want to be a bad dog parent. Right. And that's not being a bad dog parent at yeah. all. Yeah. Or the dog's dog not owner. dreaming about the yeah, dog park. They, yeah. The dog wants to be with you. Yeah. And putting your dog in a stressful situation doesn't help anybody. Right. And so you're not a bad dog owner if you don't go to dog parks. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Shannon, what's your thoughts on it? I would never take Louie to a dog park because he would hate it. But my other dog, Boston, loved to go. But I use the dog park, I would say, like the public pool. 
Like, when I go to the pool, I don't want to go and there's 400 people there and there's kids splashing at you and all this kind of stuff. I like to go to the pool when there's nobody there. So I would go with my friend at the time that was in college. She had a dog, Rocky, that she got from the same shelter that I got Boston. She lived in an apartment. I lived in a condo. We had no yard. So we would take our dog to the dog park when nobody was there. And they knew each other because we were friends. We hung out all the time. And they would play. And Boston is part sight hound. And you know, having a sight hound, that their joy is to run and no one be able to catch them. And so they would run and run and run and run and run and run and run. And then we would go home, you know. So I would go to the dog park all the time. My dog really liked it. And if other dogs showed up, he was social and, and but you know, we would probably leave. (laughs) And we went to all the different parks all over. And even in the city, different parks have different cultures. And so we had ones that we liked to go to where the dogs got along better and ones that we didn't like to go to because the dogs were really aggressive there. And so um, I would go all the time, but I tried not to put my dog in danger or try to put him in stressful social situations. I just wanted him to be able, I hated running, and, and he needed to run. It was a need of him. And so this was my way that I could let him, like, run and feel his joy of being a sight hound where I didn't have to go running every day. Yeah, I think it definitely, I have some clients that um, their dog really finds joy, um, and he truly finds joy in the dog park, but it's more about him and, and how he does it. And so it, the one dog park he totally hates like, there is no joy, there is nothing. But the other dog park, he waits for his, like, he waits. Are you, are you it? You're going to, and so he sniffs, he checks him out, and then he goes and waits for the next. He's like this greeter. He likes to greet at this one dog park where the other one, it's just too overwhelming. And he, it's just, there's n- so many dogs to greet, to welcome them into the park in such a happy, joyful way that he just, it just shuts him down. And so, um, And it's a good, he was incredibly fearful. So it was kind of a good, like, you don't have to be afraid. So we used it for some training stuff. But um, now they go up hiking and and he gets the joy because they don't, it's not so overwhelming. They hike. And so they come across a dog and he's bounding. He's not jumping on him. He's just like, hey, this is great. This, I love life. And then they kind of keep on moving on. And so it definitely is, um, it's important to, understand the dynamics going to different places so that you know you can find that balance that if you need to go to the dog park find one that is a nice balance for your dog not just because it's convenient to you for sure um so again you've kind of heard a a mix of we don't really go to dog parks to dog parks can be good in in certain ways there's some parks that have better energy for your dog Um, And so if you're going to be a dog parker, um, get out and find what is best for you and your dog, not because it's convenient and not because you think that your dog needs to go to the dog park because they don't. And your dog doesn't need to go to doggy daycare to have joy and to to enjoy it. It's um, that is our own emotion, putting it onto our dogs. And Michelle, I love the point of we when you start your kids into um, even if they're in a daycare scenario um, or you have a nanny scenario, you don't have a new nanny every day. You don't have an, you know, you don't take them to a new daycare every day. Um, and so it's, it's the core of family and community and, you know, what, what's going to be the most consistent um, for your dogs is the best thing out there. Um, and if you need help at a dog park or you're not sure if your dog likes um, that situation that you're putting your dog in, then I, you know, my recommendation is find a dog trainer that's close to you that can help you through those challenges and find what works for your dog. And maybe dog parks are not the answer. Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about us and our services, please visit our website at www.wsk9co.com. And as always, we urge you to get out and train.